Hello, everyone. My name is Lee Pucker. I'm the CEO of the Wireless Innovation Forum, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar on SCA standards for defense communications. Before the webinar begins, uh, a couple of administrative notes. First, uh, a question we always get asked is, can I get a copy of the slides? The answer is yes. Uh, we'll be posting them online. The slides will be at uh, wirelessinnovation.org slash webinars, tutorials, and resources. Uh, second point is we're going to send out a satisfaction survey to everybody who's online just to get your feedback on how well we did with the webinar and things we can do to improve it in the, in the, in the future. Uh, we ask that you please fill out this. We really take the feedback that you give us uh, very seriously in looking at, um, at how we can make this a better, uh, better experience for everybody in the future. Uh, final point is if you have any additional questions, uh, please feel free to email me directly, uh, lee.pucker at wirelessinnovation.org. A little bit about the controls. Um, you can see here uh, what, your, what your control interface looks like. Um, everybody, I believe, would have dialed in by now, but um, if you haven't, there's a couple of modes of audio that you can work with. Um, you can expand or contract your control panel um, using the little, the little double arrow key. From an audio perspective, if you're just listening on uh, speakers, you can uh, do that right through your computer. If you're dialed in using the phone, uh, go ahead and do the full number and then remember to put your audio pin in and that gives you, again, access to the controls uh, from the little control panel that you have there. Um, there's a couple of windows that you can use. Uh, one is the questions window. Uh, the speakers today have asked that we handle questions at the end. However, uh, I'll be receiving the questions, so if you type a question into the questions window, I get it in real time. Uh, if it's something that I can answer right away, I'll just type you the answer back. If it's a question for the speakers, um, then I'll, I'll ask those at the end. So feel free to type your questions as they go, and then we'll manage them at the end of the session. Uh, the second is there's also a chat window. So if you'd like to uh, share your thoughts with, with others who are um, participating in the webinar, then go ahead and feel free to type something in the chat window, and, and we can do that. Uh, last thing is at the very end, there's a little hand symbol. Uh, if you click that, it basically is raising your hand and asking to speak. At that point, I'll turn your microphone on, and um, you, know, you can ask your question directly to the presenters. So with that, um, I'm going to turn the webinar over to Eric Nicolet. Eric is, the, uh, is from Talos Communications and he is the co-chair of the Wireless Innovation Forum's Coordinating Committee on International SDA Standards. Uh, Eric, I turn it over to you. All right, Lee, thank you very much. Okay, Eric, you should have control. Yep. Do you see my do yes. you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um Okay, so we should be You're in full screen. So I should this yeah, I I should display the agenda section, is it correct? Yes. Okay. So uh, welcome everybody. It's my pleasure to uh, to to be the second to introduce this this webinar. Uh, moving forward from the from the techniques of the, the webinar itself to to the agenda and some basic introduction to the uh, to the SCA. Uh, so um, this basic uh, introduction to the SCA will be the the point I'm going to develop in the what are uh, SCA standards section. Uh, then uh, Ken Digman, uh, the other co-chair from Harris Corporation will go on with the global adoption proven performance uh, aspect and they will um, be back on stage for the, the WINEF coordinating committee on international SA standards topic of this uh, of this agenda finally as uh, Lee Perker introduced uh, we will manage the Q&A uh, session 
uh, based on the questions you will have asked using the, the message, uh, or sorry, the, the question box, uh, you have access to thanks to the control uh, panel of, uh, uh, of the webinar tool. So the webcast presenters uh, will not only be myself and Ken Wigman, a high number of uh, panelists from the, the members of the steering group of the coordinating committee will uh, take part to this webinar, giving their perspective. Uh, those are Ugo Manetti from A4SO, David Renaudo from Thales, Fabio Casalino from Selex, uh, Ken Nigman from Harris, and Julio Leschon from Roland Schwartz. And uh, you already heard uh, Lieber Kerr, who is the, uh, the moderator of this uh, webinar. So let's uh, enter into uh, into the core of this uh, of this presentation with a, a, an overview. Of course, we will not enter into the details uh, regarding uh, what are uh, SCA standards. So what we mean by SCA standards needs to be understood with the meaning in the S of standards. So what we call SCA standards are standards based on or supporting the. SCA, the SCA, the Software Communication Architecture, that is an architecture framework created to assist in the development of software-defined radio communication systems, allowing way from application software to be more easily ported across radio platforms. We're going to drill a little bit inside that in the, in, the coming, in the coming slides. So what needs definitely to be understood is that there are several uh, standards that can be considered as SCA standards. The so-called, uh, all of them, sorry, are publicly available specifications. Um, one of them is the uh, SCA dubbed Triple 2, 2.2.2, and uh, the recently released 4.0, uh, which corresponds to the, uh, the core framework and the uh, operating environment for uh, spe especially uh, general purpose uh, processes, GPPs. Uh, it is based on a number of uh, appendices uh, that are uh, other so-called SCA standards that describe some specific aspects of uh, specification that uh, take place in the, in the big picture introduced by the core specification. And uh, the third bullet you see uh, in, those, in this uh, gross categorization of uh, standards is the SCA APIs. And those animals are uh, quite different, but they do belong from our perspective in the SCA standards family. Those are uh, APIs enabling the waveform application to interact with the underlying uh, hardware platform or software platform, thanks to specific APIs that correspond to the different sort of peripherals or uh, signal access uh, mechanisms that the uh, platform is delivering to them. Uh, more on that uh, can be seen on the uh, on the WINEF website uh, at the URL you see at the um, at the bottom of this uh, of this slide. One of the the key aspects uh, related to why adopt the SCA is uh, the so-called uh, reconfigurability aspect. This has to do with the fact a given radio, and you have an example on the, on the picture, is uh, capable to host, thanks to the uh, deployment uh, mechanism, a diversity of waveform uh, applications, uh, meaning that the radio, typically if you have a, a single channel radio, and that's part of the, uh, that's the sorry, a, a given radio uh, is capable to successfully host or execute a waveform 1, then waveform 2, then waveform 3, uh, you may have more uh, complex or elaborated system where we have where you have multiple channel radios, uh, each channel being capable to host uh, a specific waveform. And at the end, what the SCA is providing, thanks to its core framework, and the way this core framework harnesses the uh, equipment, is the capability to have the radio set, the SDR set, uh, successi successively uh, execute uh, different waveforms switching from away from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, back to 1, depending on the, on the missions uh, that needs to be uh, realized by the, uh, by the user of the, of the radio. 
So that's one key aspect uh, behind SCA, especially behind the core framework. It is the, the engine, the machine, that is capable to uh, install the different uh, waveform applications and to uh, harness what's the underlying software platform uh, that hosts those uh, applications in order to reconfigure the radio from different, uh, from one application to, uh, to others. This reconfigurability story uh, concept uh, is, of course, uh, close to a user experience, and it has to do with direct operational uh, aspects. The other uh, piece of the coin, making it, of course, uh, uh, extra simple in this presentation, is the concept of portability. So here, it's not anymore uh, an operational perspective. It's more a procurement perspective or an industry perspective concerning how we make those uh, those radios. And portability is the concept to say that uh, you can uh, easily uh, reuse uh, waveform software uh, developed uh, for a given uh, waveform application and uh, distribute these uh, waveform software from, diff uh, from the, um, on top of a number of uh, compliant uh, radio platforms. And this has to do with the, with the porting concept that consists in taking a piece of software that represents a waveform, not a piece of software, a world stack of software, exactly corresponding to a waveform, and porting it on uh, a number of, uh, of different platforms. Those platforms can be platforms of the same vendor. Uh, those can uh, as well, depending of course on the various uh, uh, industrial contexts we, uh, we encounter in the SCA ecosystem, the platforms uh, can belong to different, uh, to different vendors or manufacturers. And uh, the way from itself uh, can come from uh, government-owned repositories, can be uh, industry proprietary, can be uh, shared or distributed uh, across uh, a diversity of, uh, of licensing and business models. Of course. So the key concept around that and the key rationale around that is that portability is an help, is definitely a help to achieve uh, interoperability between the radio equipment uh, at, uh, at reduced cost. So I like to dub that uh, in saying this has to do with interoperability affordability. Uh, thanks to the porting capability of this stack of software uh, you are seeing on the top, uh, you uh, will uh, minimize the risks to, uh, to have different interpretation from uh, a given way from standard spec and therefore uh, this helps uh, in achieving uh, interoperable solution because at the end what counts and we are back to operational something uh, what what counts is that of course the different radio platforms communicate each other over the air and this is what uh, interrupt uh, is about so uh, the two previous uh, slides depicted the two big things that SCA standards are providing and this third one, uh, graphical one you're seeing, is uh, illustrating a little bit more uh, what was introduced with the three bullet points uh, three slides ago uh, in, uh, in terms of, okay, what do we have uh, more precisely inside those famous uh, SCA standards. On the top of the picture you have the uh, away from software. So that's, and that's at the core of uh, SDR concept, of course. Uh, you have this software that makes the signal processing, the protocol, uh, all those number of things that represent the, uh, the operation a given radio is, uh, is doing for the sake of uh, communicating over the air. So that's this way from software which is uh, uh, to be installed inside the, uh, and executed uh, inside the, uh, the radio equipment. And this is to make things simple what the SCA core framework you see on the, uh, on the left hand side in the middle is about. So thanks to a number of APIs, the, uh, the user of the radio set can select which waveform among uh, the available ones is to be executed. And then this SCA core framework installs the corresponding software and, um, and, uh, and runs it 
and uh, at some after some moment in time, uh, which is called the deployment process, then the uh, the radio application is capable to operate. This way from software, because it has to do with hardware, it is running on hardware, uh, needs a number of things uh, which are characterized in the SCA appendices API, which, has the, which are the blue things you see at the bottom. Uh, a number of uh, sub-rectangles are quoted to illustrate what's inside that. Those are uh, standardized uh, technical services, so software things, that enable the way from software to execute. Uh, the middleware or the transfer mechanism you see uh, correspond to the capability, the, the, the software capabilities based on the buses, etc., and communication means from the radio equipment that enable the different uh, software components of the waveform software to communicate with each other. Because the waveform software is not executing on a given uh, processing element, it is distributed over a number of uh, processing elements, uh, typically GPPs, DSPs, uh, FPGAs. So there is uh, a need for communication means and uh, SCA appendices with the uh, core bar recommendation with uh, some uh, uh, other possible transfer mechanisms are uh, uh, defining how the way from uh, software components can communicate with each other. Other kind of thing is the POSIX uh, operating systems, the access to the kernel that some ultra lightweight uh, or lightweight profiles are enabling, uh, which are other uh, key, uh, especially for general purpose processes or DSPs aspects, uh, that enable the software components to correctly execute. Uh, so um, all of that at the end, those things in the blue rectangle, are the standardized items that each platform needs to provide for the sake of correctly executing the way from software and what they provide are technical services that help the way from software to execute or enable it to execute. But that's not enough. A software in order to uh, execute, uh, especially when we're dealing with radio, where you have an antenna, where you have a number of key uh, ancillaries, typically such as GPS, etc., and you have as well the uh, I.O. sources from the users, uh, there is a need to access and exchange uh, a number of, uh, of data that are coming from the underlying hardware. You have as well an essential requirement, uh, especially in the military domain, um, that has to do with securing the transmission. So uh, in addition to the blue things that are uh, software technical services, uh, the uh, big uh, family of radio devices and services uh, which are specified via devices and services APIs. This was the third bullet uh, of the slides, uh, three slides ago. These uh, series of uh, APIs are uh, enabling to characterize what the way from software is uh, allowed or uh, to use, and it is up to the platform provider to develop the corresponding, uh, uh, let's say, drivers that will deliver in a standard compliant uh, way uh, that is characterized by the device and service APIs to uh, deliver the corresponding service to the way from software. So uh, the quotes here, examples, are audio corresponding to uh, accessing to uh, a user speech signal or uh, giving out uh, the, uh, uh, the output uh, audio signal to the, uh, to the headphone of the user. The security uh, has to do with accessing the infosec module. A transceiver has to do with accessing to the uh, uh, signal captured uh, over the air by the antenna system and all uh, what goes, ahead, goes along in terms of uh, digital uh, analog and digital down conversion and reciprocally in transmit. Ethernet is an example of a typical output socket uh, that can be the endpoint of the, uh, of the wave from socket. At the end, generally speaking, uh, we see here uh, each of those uh, rectangles more or less correspond to a given, uh, a given standard. And uh, those are dubbed as the uh, so-called uh, operating environment, OE, uh, which is a terminology that is very, very often seen uh, in the uh, SCA uh, ecosystem. And uh, the, so uh, at the end, the uh, 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 SCA standards we are talking about 
a corresponds to make things simple to each of the individual rectangle uh, you've seen on this slide. Uh, I guess that's it as far as I am concerned, and I will now turn the uh, well ask Lee uh, to turn the uh, the control to our next speaker, uh, who is uh, Ken Digman from uh, Aris Corporation. Okay, Ken, you should now have control. Okay. Can you see the presentation? Okay, great. Um, thank you, Eric, and thank you, Lee. So the FCA, as Eric has pointed out, um, covers a wide category of, of technology and capabilities, and it really is being adopted um, globally and has proven performance through a number of different programs that have adopted it and are using it. Uh, some of the real advantages of it are given that it's a common platform. It really assists in the reuse of waveform application software from one vendor to another vendor or even within um, different platforms, different radios within an within uh, individual vendor. Um, it really, one of the original goals, primary goals of the SCA was to enhance and enable interoperability. And it does this by providing the common platform that allows the waveform to be easily ported from one vendor's application, one vendor's radio to another vendor's radio, and by making it much more cost-effective and technically efficient to move waveform applications between vendors' radios, um, the interoperability situation within the services is greatly enhanced. Um, thereby having the same waveform application on different on different radios from different vendors, um, so that they can ensure that communications are are managed across all the different radios that they have in their system. Um, really, this is, can be seen in a couple of different ways. Um, what we see going on in a couple of areas are some multinational coalitions in which a number of nations are collaborating on the development of a platform based on the SCA and also a common waveform that is then, um, then, then used on all of the different member nations uh, platforms, ensuring the interoperability, interoperability between those. And as I mentioned also, the other way that you get the interoperability um, is kind of how it's been done in the U.S. with the JTRS and now the JITNIC model, where a waveform application is kind of defined by the U.S. government, developed by one vendor, and then made available to all the other vendors for them to put on their own radio platforms to ensure interoperability that way. So there are kind of two different ways that enhance the interoperability is being approached, um, one through a coalition approach and another one uh, where the vendors are, are doing the, the development on their, on their uh, platforms themselves based on a waveform that is coming to them from an information repository. Another real advantage um, of having the SCA and something that it provides, Eric talked about the ability to um, have multiple waveforms running on a waveform at the same time. Kind of extension of that is the ease of use and ease of loading new types of applications and waveforms onto the radios. So SCA applications run the gamut from simple beyond or simple line of sight applications to hopping applications to more advanced um, SATCOM applications. And now, you know, recently, um, SCA waveforms are of the nature of Man A ad hoc networking applications and supporting capabilities and features, advanced features such as dynamic spectrum allocation. And with the SCA and the ability of the SCA and the core framework to accept these applications um, as a software, you don't have to do any modifications to your radio necessarily to support those waveform applications. It's just a software load. And a reboot in the core framework now makes those um, new waveform applications available to the users but it's quite an advantage in terms of the deployment and the provisioning of new applications um, as they become available for use. And another significant aspect of what's been going on globally is really the adoption of the SCA and an ecosystem that is being generated to support the SCA. A number of radio vendors have radio products that are based on the SCA 
there's tool vendors, middleware vendors, um, integrators, systems integrators, and development platform providers. Everybody uh, is, has really come around in um, creating an environment to support SCA development and, and thereby make it easier and more cost effective for waveform development on SCA platforms. <laughs> so this is a kind of graphical example of how the SCA is being utilized um, kind of throughout the world. Obviously in the U.S. is where it was developed initially and there's a large number of SCA based programs um, from your HMS, um, handheld man pack, small form factor program, to your airborne maritime fixed wing program, uh, to other programs like the mid-tier mid networking vehicular radio and your small airborne networking radio to name just a couple of the SCA based programs that are available in the U.S. Europe has also become a large adopter of the SCA with quite a few number of national programs happening in the European theater. In Spain you have the Terso program, uh, Germany has the SVFUA program, uh, France has its contact program, Poland has a national SDR program going on, um, Sweden has a common tactical radio system program that it's kicked off. Finland has a program. Italy has a couple of different programs, uh, the Forza NEC program and the SDRN program. Um, so that's kind of the activity that's going on in the European area, showing how it's really being adopted in the European area on a national basis. Also in Asia, there's two national activities going on, one in, the, one in Korea with the Tactical Information Communication Network program and also the Tactical Multiband and Multi-Role Radio programs. Both of those are ongoing in Korea. And also a uh, Maritime SCA SDR program is underway in Japan. So it does show the adoption by nations kind of in all of the, in most of the major areas of the world, the North American and America areas, European and Asian. Um, there are also a couple of significant coalition activities going on. One is the ESOR program, which is a coalition of six nations in the European area, uh, Finland, France, Italy, Poland, Spain, and Sweden. Um, they have taken extended the SCA, triple two, um, to add some specific extensions that were needed for that program and have defined a, a waveform to go on that, that then each member nation will pick up that waveform and put it on their platforms. And another, um, another coalition, coalition activity going on is Colwyn, which is a NATO-based activity. So now I'd like to pass it over to Hugo Manetti um, from A4 SOR program. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you, Ken. Uh, I'm the president of A4 SOR. Uh, uh, A4 SOR is the alliance of four or six uh, uh, industry, European industry. Uh, the, the joint venture has been established in 2000, end of 2008, is in charge of managing the ESO program. A major software defined radio program launched under the umbrella of the European Defense Agency. The ESO program is sponsored, funded by the governments of Finland, as Ken was mentioning before, Finland, France, Italy, Poland, Spain, and Sweden, what we, we call them participating states. The OCAR uh, uh, AE, uh, the acquisition is the acquisition agency, European acquisition agency in charge uh, of managing the, the ESO program and contract. And they in fact have awarded to us to, to the ESO, to ESO, ESO staff, the ESO contract. The ESO ESO shareholder and subcontractors at the same time are the ESO PS respective what we call national champions, namely Electrobit for Finland, Thales Communication Security for France, Telec ES for Italy, Radmo for Poland, Indra Sistemas for Spain, and Sub AB for Sweden. As of nations and industry have uh, jointly recognized from the very beginning the outstanding benefit of the SCA, the SCA, as the foundation for the SDR military business. What we have developed the ESO architecture extended the SCA in order to facilitate the waveform portability, addressing secure solutions for a large scope of military waveform applications. In, in a very uh, in synthesis, 
Next architecture address the following areas. Definition of the relational environment for DSP and FPGA. So providing scalable architectural approach between MAL and CORBA-based solutions. And the definition of extension in addition to the already published JTRS radio, radio devices, radio services, and radio security services ADA. I can, uh, can say that this architecture has already been implemented on six uh, uh, different heterogeneous uh, SR Nation SDR platforms. Now we are progressing uh, developing the, the, um, the waveform has to be posted, which again has to be posted on the national platform. That's all I want to say for the moment. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. <coughs> okay, so from the previous slide, the green dots had kind of represented what we consider the first wave, the early adopters of the SCA. Um, we're seeing now that there's a second wave, really, of adopters for the SCA that are coming along, um, and another set of nations that are starting um, SCA-based programs that are in the process of, of putting SCA-based programs together. In those countries, you know, countries, for instance, like Brazil down in South America, and in the Asian, Asian arena, you have both in, in, uh, Singapore and India um, have SCA-based programs that, that are underway. And in the Middle East, you have countries like Israel and Turkey and United Arab Emirates that are also investigating and looking into uh, standardization programs that are based on the SCA. So this is a, um, a technology and a standard that has been around, proven itself, and is going through a first set of adoption and is now going through its second wave of, of adoption. So one of the things... Um, that's very important is it's not just a technology for the development of, of applications. It's also a technology and a standard that, that really supports and highly supports um, the deployment of the radios. And a large number of radios have already been deployed that have the SCA based in them and have waveforms that are SCA based waveforms. A few examples of the radios are shown here. Uh, one of them is the General Dynamics uh, rifleman radio, the PRC-154. Um, to date, about 19,000 of those radios have been ordered from the U.S. government, uh, from General Dynamics, and a much larger number of rifleman radios are going to be procured in the near future. Um, there's also the General Dynamics PRC-155 um, multi-channel man pack. That's actually no picture of that is shown here, but that's another one where there has been a procurement of an initial set of those radios with about 3,700 of the PRC 155s being ordered so far. From a Harris perspective, um, we have about there are about 25,000 uh, 117 Gs, PRC 117 Gs that have been deployed to the field so far. Uh, that's the man pack that's pictured in the middle. And then there's also a large number of PRC 152 handhelds, about 160,000 of those that have been deployed to the field. Another large um, quantity of radios has been provided by TALIS with the PRC-148 inviter radio with about 200,000 inviter units deployed to the field so far. Uh, so you can tell by those numbers that the SDA really has um, supported very large radio deployments and has been proven field capable and able to support uh, operational activities in the field. One of the things that's also kind of interesting to notice based on those numbers is that the largest numbers of radios that have been deployed are of the handheld form factor, which is kind of considered a very challenging um, environment, um, not a lot of power, uh, not a lot of processing capabilities, and the SCA has been very successfully deployed in that, that level of the platform. So from a Harris perspective, um, we have really utilized the SCA and have standardized on the, the basis, the use of the SCA in a large number of, of radios, uh, supporting a large number of waveforms. We have approximately six fielded radios right now that are SCA based, when being handheld uh, radios for both the international and the DOD markets. We have two man pack radios that are currently um, fielded. Again, one of them is the international for the international market another one is the for the one 
for the um, DOD market. Um, those are currently released and deployed radios. Uh, we also have two new radios that are under development, one a personal rolled radio and the other radio that um, was just awarded as part of the maneuver program. Um, not quite released yet on either of those. Uh, so that's a very large number of, of radios that we have the SCA in and it's, we're really able to leverage um, utilizing the same version of the SCA and the same source code across all those waveform plat or radio platforms making it very cost effective and very efficient in the development of our, our radio software. Across all of those platforms, we also support a very large number of, of waveforms. Um, and these are legacy waveforms such as Bulos and HaveQuick and Singars and QuickLook, um, SAT, SATCOM-based waveforms such as DAMA and IW. And we also support a number of networking waveforms from our Harris proprietary ANW2 to the U.S. government SRW, W and W um, waveforms, and we're also putting MUOS now in the products. And having all of the radio platforms utilizing the same SCA platform makes the portability of the waveforms between those different platforms very efficient. So we can quite easily take waveforms that are developed on one platform and migrate them over to another Falcon 3 platform, substantially reducing our development costs and our time to market. So the SCA has been a very valuable um, tool that Harris has used to, to field um, waveforms across a large number of, of radio platforms. So on the previous slide, I had talked about some of the main government programs, um, some of the first deployed systems, but there are a lot of other deployed systems. Um, the previous slide had kind of talked about mostly ground-based systems, man pack and handheld radios, um, but there's also a significant number of airborne-based systems. Um, for instance, Raytheon and Rockwell both have airborne platforms that, have S that are based on the SCA. Um, for instance, the RT-840 from Waco Collins and the ARC-231 and main gate systems from Raytheon are just a couple examples of airborne-based platforms. Um, and there are also a lot of other ground-based systems also. Rockwell Collins and Talus have, a, have the FlexNet uh, system, which is a ground-based system. Rody Schwartz uh, has its vehicular tactical radio system. And uh, Talus also has its Flex, FlexNet, FastNet, and NextWave family. And Celix also has been very active in the development of a family of radio products um, from its S-Wave uh, product line. So there are, around the world, a number of manufacturers that have developed um, SCA-based systems um, and are deploying those very effectively. So next I'd like to introduce Fabio Castellini from Celix. Thank you, Ken. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So, uh, from Celex uh, point of view, Celex uh, ES has been involved in the CA-based uh, technologies and SDR product development since early 2000, both in national and international programs. The important national program, uh, as you were recalling also, is driving the development of a complete family of uh, Celex SDR products called Swave, such as an extremely portable handheld uh, device, uh, two channels, Mempac radio, a vehicular product line which includes one channel, two channels, and four channel systems, and also naval and avionic versions to complete the family, hence covering all the needs and uh, segments of operation. Some of them, like the handheld and vehicular solutions, are already available and fielded to the customer. Internationally, Celex ES participates to most of the European SCA SDR programs, the most important one being the ESSOR, where Celex led the architecture definition. And also Celex is actively participating to the Wireless Innovation Forum. 
this is uh, just to say that from all these experiences, mainly gathered through products availability and fielding and related customer feedback, we can affirm that there are great benefits in adopting the SCA-based techniques into the software defining radio devices. Actually, uh, as uh, you can see, the benefits are both from the customer and the radio provider perspective. From the radio provider, we can say, for instance, we can recall the reuse of application software, that is mainly the waveform, on top of different radio classes based on the same technology. Reuse of software middleware, that is the core of the CA radio capability management, such as uh, uh, common interfaces for waveform instantiation and control and use. Uh, then we have also the definition and use of an architecture which provides for an approach to radio device internal control that is common to all the radio family. We have for sure more portability of waveform application software across radio platforms due to the basic set of rules defining the waveform structure itself that again uh, are common. Overall, this allows for a shorter time to market, as we have recalled, a better technology and product maturity. Uh, overall, uh, development optimization, for instance, in terms of number of software implementation of a single waveform or, or a single software application. And uh, uh, last but not, not least, uh, of course, the cost uh, reduction. That is uh, a, a very important factor characterizing also the customer benefits, which uh, also includes, uh, we could say, for instance, using the same platform for different radio applications that are both waveforms and user services. The availability of uh, upgradable and flexible solutions supported the rapid uh, deployment of mission-ready systems, as you can see. Uh, but I would say also the life cycle that is for a better and long-lasting maintenance and operation in terms of a device lifetime, so durability of a, a single device. Uh, that is also the improvement of logistic overall, thanks to the system's uh, modularity and uh, uh, standard interfaces. The uh, availability of products that enable and enhance the interoperability experience and capability, of course, but also the availability of a networking and cognitive solutions enabler, which are the SCA-based platforms, and uh, overall the growth capability, uh, that is the, uh, um, the uh, allow, that is to allow the uh, implementation for future needs, based on future needs and uh, requirements and even proprietary solutions on top uh, of these platforms, like for, for instance, uh, waveforms, but also security algorithms, uh, user applications, uh, etc. all thanks and due to a common definition approach. Um, to conclude, the SCA is a solution which Celex believes uh, being an important factor, an important key enabler and technology for the communication solutions of today, but mainly and especially uh, of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. Um, so here's a, not a complete list, but a sampling of some of the waveforms that are available and have been deployed on SCA-based platforms. I'm not going to go through those individually but you can see a wide range of, of types of waveforms, from line of sight waveforms to hopping waveforms, uh, to SATCOM waveforms with the MIL standard 181, 182, 183, um, networking waveforms like SRW and W&W, and, w, and um, you know, all vintage of waveforms too, some that have been around for tens of years and have been migrated over to an SCA platform, and other waveforms that are brand new and have been developed specifically on the SCA. Um, such as MUOS and SRW and W&W and w, um, coming out of the JTRSIR. In addition to those kind of individually developed waveforms, either by a vendor or by the JTRS, um, there are a couple of significant coalition-based activities going on right now. 
Uh, one is uh, CoalWIN, which is a NATO-based coalition. Uh, and this activity is really in its infancy, just defining what the, their networking waveform is going to be and just kicking that program off. But a much more advanced program is the SOAR program, as Ugo mentioned during, earlier. Um, and the high data rate waveform that has been developed under that program is quite mature and is undergoing um, testing at this point in time. So um, waveform developments, new, new and old, continue to be happening on, on the SCA platforms. And now I'd like to introduce David Renado from TALIS. Yes, thank you, uh, Ken. Uh, SDR technology uh, based on the open and uh, standardized architectures is uh, a prime solution to facilitate interoperability, national or regional sovereignty, and uh, network-centric operations transitions uh, for the uh, forces uh, uh, through the waveforms development and the porting uh, of the waveforms onto different SDR platforms. Uh, SDR uh, SCA standards are key success factors for reducing cost in porting common waveforms onto different platforms coming from different origins. And these standards bring benefits to the creations of an ecosystem that in fine provides optimized time to market, reduced development cost, and providing uh, the most important more options to the customers. And Thales uh, in this area has a unique experience in waveform portability and uh, SDR platform reconfigurability. Uh, thanks to its SDR platforms, SDR waveforms, and as well uh, SDR lab solutions. Uh, for example, uh, Thales is currently deploying FlexNet solutions, uh, narrowband uh, waveforms, wideband waveforms, ground waveforms, airborne waveforms, or soldier waveforms uh, on various type of platforms, including FastNet and, and NextWave. Uh, it Thales deploys uh, on the U.S. market uh, some uh, GEM uh, PRC-148 solutions. Uh, Thales contributes to the European ESOR program, as uh, mentioned earlier, uh, develops the contact uh, program uh, in France, uh, and as well provides some uh, SDR labs to some international customers. Uh, it shows uh, this uh, variety of, uh, of program, uh, this large variety of program, uh, all using SDR SCA architectures, all with different business models, uh, shows the interest of using such standard approach uh, for uh, leading radio suppliers like Thales in order to better propose solutions to, to customers, more options to customers. So, thank you. Thank you, David. So here, we talked about the ecosystem in the beginning, and here's a, an example, a bit of the scope of the ecosystem that is evolving and is available to support SCA development. And the companies that are represented here um, represent a wide range of capabilities in the value chain um, of the development of SCA solutions from radio manufacturers to integrators to subsystem providers, uh, waveform developers, middleware, middleware and tool vendors, and educational institutions. So a lot of different aspects of industry are involved in this and have taken up and are supporting the SCA. And from a geographic perspective, that gives you an idea of where these different companies are located. It truly does cover most of the world um, where SCA activities are being performed either through radio development or tool development or supporting software development. So, and next, I would like to introduce Rudiger Leshorn from Rodian Schwartz. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Welcome, I'm Rudiger Leshorn responsible for studies in the radio communications division of Roden Schwarz in Munich, Germany. 
Within the Wireless Innovation Forum, I'm the vice chair and also a member of the steering group of the Coordination Committee on International SEA Standards. If you have read the above statements, you might wonder about the term near target development platform. I'd like to explain a bit of this concept within the next few minutes. The near target development platform is an approach extending the portability support of the SEA and providing an IPR firewall between the platform provider and the waveform provider, respectively the integrator of the waveform. Consider a typical porting task. A third party waveform has to be ported on top of a radio platform. The traditional and, as we all know, cumbersome approach would be that the platform provider in the role of the integrator has to take the available waveform artifacts like UML models, model up scripts, and as far as feasible source code and port it in a first step to some general waveform development tools. After that, in a second step, the waveform code is ported from the general tools to the target platform. The target platform is the operational radio. Depending on the circumstances and the complexity, this can be a significant effort. And we have another issue here. This type of porting requires that most of the waveform IPRs in term of company confidential data has to be made available to the integrator. One might argue that a neutral integrator would solve this issue. However, software-defined radio platforms are devices of extremely high complexity, which makes this approach not really feasible. At this point, an approach comes into play using the above-mentioned near-target development platform. So, what is a near-target development platform, or short NTDP? As the name already is telling us, this development platform does have the same architecture, the same processing elements, and also the same RF hardware as the target platform. Functionally, this builds a complete radio, which allows also interoperability tests on RF level without having access to the real target platform. In addition, this platform provides test and maintenance interfaces, which are required urgently by the engineers porting the waveform. Such interfaces normally are not available on an operational radio. Using a near-target development platform for porting is the optimal way to perform this task. It provides an IPR firewall between the waveform part and the platform part because integration of the waveform can be done by the waveform provider, respectively a third-party integrator, without the need to access the target platform. Transfer of the code from the NTDP to the target platform can be done by the platform provider without looking into the IPRs of the waveform. That's what I meant with firewall. NTDB concepts allow also development and integration of national crypto solutions by trusted third parties. Near target development platforms for up-to-date SDRs are already available on the market, are tried and tested in customer projects. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. And now I will give it to Lee to pass back to Eric. Okay, Eric, you should now have control.
Okay, so uh, you should see my screen. I'm moving to where we were. Uh, okay. Yep. Can you confirm me, Lee? This is correctly displaying. Yes, we're seeing your full screen. Okay. So uh, thanks, uh, Rudiger, for this last quote uh, from uh, from an industry perspective during this webcast. Uh, and uh, we are uh, closing to, to the end of this uh, presentation. Um, uh, the uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. I have exposing screen share. Do you still see my uh, my screen, Lee? Uh, yes, it's currently showing Rudy's slide. Okay, move to the next. Um, we're okay. You're not in full screen anymore. I, I'm not. In full, yeah, I'm not in full screen anymore. Going back to full screen. Yep. Now you're back in full screen. Okay. So, uh, my, my apologies for for the inconvenience to the to the audience. So the, the last part of this briefing has to do with a brief overview of uh, what uh, we, the more or less the, the speakers of this call, uh, coordinate together in order to move forward uh, via presentations such as the one we, we deliver today, uh, the uh, adoption and improvement of the uh, of the SCA. And this has to do with uh, the rationale of uh, supporting the so-called uh, CCSCA. Uh, that stands for uh, uh, the Coordinating Committee on International SCA Standards. So the mandate of this committee, who is uh, one body within the one of the technical committees within the Wireless Innovation Forum, is to support the harmonization of the SCA standards at the international level for the mutual benefits of all stakeholders. To uh, to include uh, defining an industry-driven SCA evolution roadmap for the international community. Because things are evolving, the standards are not static or, or, or frozen. They are improving as the technology uh, improves. Of course, this is setting a number of configuration management issues, but definitely we need to uh, to monitor and impose things concerning uh, the evolution roadmap uh, for the international community. Profiling the SCA spec and related APIs to define internationally accepted variants that are hosted by the forum. Uh, developing extensions to the SCA standards that address uh, any gaps between the defined SCA evolution roadmap and from accepted SCA specification variants. Providing implementation and certification guides, tools, etc. Using implementation and supporting proliferation. Establishing and managing industry-led certification programs where appropriate. So those are the goals. Of course, things are uh, contribution-driven. And uh, this uh, CCSCA uh, is uh, is active, and the management of this CCSCA uh, is active in creating the ground for such activities to take place within the winner. The so-called management of the committee is what you have right in the middle of the uh, of this picture. Uh, the so-called CCSCA steering group. Uh, this steering group. Uh, is composed uh, currently of uh, eight uh, eight uh, members uh, who are uh, overseeing the activities within the within the committee. Uh, they are uh, working in relation with a number of advisors. Uh, the advisors are a represented from uh, from MODs, uh, reputed active or with a reasonable background on uh, on SCA uh, standards. And, uh, and the work groups depicted here are, are the repository for the different activities subject to take place within the uh, CCSCA. All of this is reporting to the firm offices and board of directors. The members of the uh, CCSCA uh, steering group are Raytheon, Roland Trotz, Harris, Hindra, Selex, Itachi Kukusai Electric, A4SO, and Thales. Uh, so this makes uh, a pretty spread and worldwide uh, breadth of, uh, of stakeholders uh, that are uh, that are managing activities uh, within the CCSCA. The remaining of the activities being, of course, uh, uh, open to uh, any of the WINF uh, of the WINF members. 
And uh, just to give you a, a view of uh, what's taking place and what's uh, on the agenda, uh, this picture, this slide is showing the, the, the upcoming uh, CCSCA event. First, pretty significant one uh, is the SCA 4.1 workshop that is co-organized with the JTNC uh, that will take place on the 21st and 22nd November in San Diego. Uh, I'd like to express my thanks to, for, to, uh, to Raytheon Corporation for hosting this event. And uh, this will uh, have to do uh, with, um, with uh, launching oriented orienting sorry, the direction into which the SCA uh, 4.1 elaboration activities should go, uh, taking the recently published 4.0 as a starting point. Next event uh, will be the Wave from Portability Workshop uh, hosted on the 22nd of January next year in Paris, uh, hosted by Thales, uh in relation with one of the projects of the CCSCA called Wave from Portability State of the Art and uh, in relation with working meetings of the, uh, of the SCA uh, project teams or the, the, the different work groups uh, of, the, uh, of the CCSCA will meet uh, around that workshop. So uh, the day and day after, I guess. Uh, so uh, more information is available at the URL uh, displaying on the screen uh, regarding this workshop. Uh, then um, we will have the, the big yearly event of the, the WINEF, uh, which is the uh, annual uh, U.S. technical conference uh, that will take place from the 11th to the 13th of March in uh, I guess it's in the Chicago area, uh, hosted by Motorola, uh, Motorola Solutions. So uh, we will have as well a number of working meetings of the uh, SCA work groups, and more on this conference can be seen uh, in the uh, uh, at the address uh, displayed. Uh, more globally than the CCSCA. Uh, the, the, all the uh, Winner Forum events, because they are all the, uh, committees within the Wireless Innovation Forum, can be as well uh, monitored uh, at the URL displayed at the bottom of this slide. So uh, we are getting pretty close to the conclusion of, these, uh, of this presentation. Uh, so uh, you can find out, uh, find out more uh, asking questions to uh, uh, any of the two uh, main presenters or the moderator, uh, so uh, Ken Nigman, uh, myself, or Lee Procker, you have the email addresses uh, displaying on the screen. And I guess this concludes uh, what I had to say. I would now uh, uh, thank you for, uh, for listening and turn uh, the page to the uh, Q&A session, so don't hang up. Uh, it's now time for uh, Lee Procker to uh, to organize uh, the Q&A uh, session based on the questions we've been receiving uh, during the uh, during the webinar. Thank you very much. Lee, it's up to you. Sure. Thank you, Eric. So the uh, first question that we uh, received was, can we say that since the US JTNC and Europe's ESOR owns and maintains the waveforms, without a standard like the SDA, this model would not work? And so I'll offer that uh, for just uh, comment by anyone. Who wants to take the question? Uh, Lee, since the question is pretty long, is there a way you, you display it? Okay, I've typed it into the uh, chat window for everyone to see. Uh, Fabio okay. indicated he wants to respond, so I'll let uh, Fabio please please proceed.
Okay, Lee. Lee uh, Eric speaking. I, I could elaborate on, on, on the question. Um, so, so for sure, part of the driver of the activities within the coordinating committee on international SCA standards uh, has to do with coordinating an international in the sense that uh, obviously uh, the, the, the less uh, variation we, we have uh, across the different flavors of uh, SEA based standards, uh, the best it would be for the uh, overall efficiency of the, uh, of the ecosystem. So, uh, so, so I would say uh, yes, if I well understood the question, it is, it is clear and it's one of the main motivations for the stakeholders active in the CCSCA that uh, we need to uh, harmonize uh, as uh, as good uh, as we can uh, the uh, the different flavors of uh, standards in order to uh, to to take the best of the um, of the underlying uh, technical vision uh, uh, and model for for SCA existence. Thank you, Eric. Are there uh, are there other people who wish to comment? This is Ken. Um, the SCA is a very important part of of the model supporting uh, the work from the JITNIC and the SOR that allows the portability between the different vendors, um, either independently, like in the U.S. model or in a coalition format like in this sort of model. Um, so that is a, a key component and an enabler of what the JTNC and SOR are trying to accomplish, yes. Okay. The next question um, is in an SDR, waveform is the radio and the platform is just a stack of hardware to host with an, o, with an operating environment. Had it not been for the SDA, the waveform would not have been portable on different platforms, defeating the main objective of SDR. Can we share this view with one and all and comment, please? Unmuted. Would like to start. Uh, Eric speaking. I, I, I can start. Uh, yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, would uh, would SCA not be there? Uh, the uh, the landscape for uh, for portable waveforms would be much more uh, hazardous and and, and variant uh, across the different solutions. So it would be excessive to say that there would be zero portability without SCA to be um, to to be transparent and, uh, and, uh, and absolutely clear. But at the same time, uh, portability is a, is a concept that has to do with efficiency. Efficiency is not zero or one. Uh, 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 what we are uh, trying to do and what SCA uh, achieves and what the SCA standards in general and we like to insist on the importance of it. Uh, devices and services APIs uh, in that story. For portability, it is uh, very important to have uh, as clear and uh, relevant technical specifications that are standardized in order to uh, make this efficiency factor uh, for uh, portability uh, as close to 100% uh, to as possible. Of course, push button portability is not yet there. Uh, we are not at a level uh, in a model where you would uh, execute things like you are doing with, uh, uh, with a Windows program. But uh, thanks to, uh, to the SCA, thanks to the APIs, we are uh, certainly doing way better than what uh, anyone could do uh, in, uh, in taking a bunch of uh, a bunch, uh, chunk of software and, and saying, OK, let's port it to the next platform. Uh, it's really an help to have uh, SCA standards. Thank you. So Eric, that leads to the uh, next question. Maybe you can comment on it as well. Uh, the next question that came in was, wouldn't an error interface standard accomplish the same thing? 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there is a big difference between uh, what SCA standards are doing and the NER interface uh, standard is doing. The air interface standard is uh, stating what has to happen over the air in order for two radio equipments to discuss to discuss over the air, to communicate over the air. Uh, this is the what to be done uh, in order to have uh, correct radios. Uh, what SCA is about uh, is uh, entering into the how we do that inside a given radio. Of course, there is the possibility to, uh, if you have the budget, you have the possibility to make your own full-blown uh, ASIC implementation of uh, what is being requested by the uh, air interface standard. Uh, it has some issues. Uh, uh, one of the big issues, uh, it's quite more a challenge to interoperate with, with uh, radios from other vendors than uh, in interoperating with, uh, with yourself. And it has been uh, recognized uh, by several and several uh, uh, different uh, actors, but starting from the air interface specification, typically a STANAG or uh, take some other, some other kind of, uh, of radio standards, it's very often not enough to, uh, to, uh, to enable a uh, good level of interoperability uh, with the, uh, the amount of uh, expenses that the industrial market, especially the military market, can sustain. And that's uh, definitely the, uh, the reason why uh, simply exchanging air interface standards is being recognized, namely, I'd like to quote them by uh, our advisors from, uh, from NATO, uh, to sharing the, the, the specs is not enough. And that uh, typically the reason why there is a, a, a very wide interest in, uh, uh, in sharing more than the spec, uh, eventually moving towards uh, sharing uh, some software uh, among, among nations, typically, in order to make things uh, easier. So the, the air interface standard is, is definitely not the same kind of anymore than the SCA standards. It is at the boundary of the radio, while the SCA standards are in the core of the radio between the wafer map and the rest of the, uh, the equipment. And the reason why uh, SCA uh, standards are there is to uh, do much more efficiently implementation that are uh, interoperable in compliance with uh, the air interface standard. So I'd like to, to underline, of course we need air interface standards. This is compulsory. But the uh, SCA standards are bringing uh, an addition to, to the picture that enable uh, the industry uh, to, uh, to perform things more, uh, more efficiently and in a, most, uh, in a more cost-effective way. Thank you. So this is Ken. I would just like to build a little bit on top of what Eric said there, especially the cost-effective part on the end. Uh, this is what we have really experienced at Harris is we've ported now a number of waveforms out of the JTRS, the JITNIC Information Repository, onto our platforms. And we found the cost of doing the port is significantly less than if we'd had to do the full development ourselves. And that is really one of the key advantages and enablers um, of, of the SCA, that we have that part of the port goes much, much more smoothly than if we had to develop it ourselves, develop the whole waveform ourselves based on just an on-air interface specification. Thanks, Ken. So uh, next question, uh, we've got a couple more. And just so everyone knows, um, I think uh, you know the, the formal time for the webinar has expired. However, I think the panelists are willing to, to stay on for a little while to answer the questions as they come in. So we'll, um, uh, we'll continue to answer those as, as makes sense. Um, so the next question is, do you believe that military communication systems vendors that do not embrace the SCA compatibility are destined to lose their market share? And if so, in what time frame?
Anybody want to take that one? I, I, I could. Uh, it would be glad if some others would like to start. David, how about you? That sounds like a question that's uh, up your alley. Well, Eric, maybe you can start and then uh, others can join in. Yep. Uh, of course, this one is very, uh, very difficult question in the sense that there is such a variety of uh, business models uh, that, depending on the business model of a, a system vendor, you may have some having some uh, some niche things or uh, some specific relationships with uh, a number of governments, uh, namely their own government, uh, for, which could create some exceptions uh, to what I believe is. Uh, is is a short answer to the question that would be that, that would be a, yes. Uh, at some moments, there is a fundamental revolution in the uh, in the ecosystem that is pushing all of us, and it's not it's not evident for all of us. Uh, I mean, us the uh, uh, industry, uh, the prime industry players in this market, to evolve towards this new uh, ecosystem where uh, we are more and more. Uh, more and more uh, uh, subject to uh, to open the radios, to uh, to expose things, to to team uh, in the collaborative uh, programs. This is more and more uh, a demand from uh, our customers. Uh, so, uh, in front of the in front of the industrial models. Uh, we are more and more subject to, intro, to to work together, and sometimes we are competitors. So we need to learn how to work together around those standards. And even when we are in a more uh, classical uh, market model where uh, full solutions are, uh, are required, I do believe it is an essential uh, efficiency uh, enabler. To, to structure the industrial model of uh, uh, around those uh, SCA-based uh, techniques that enable to uh, to, to port away from more efficiently, uh, that uh, enable to have platforms capable to host a, a variety of waveforms. So at the end, uh, yes, to me, it's clearly uh, uh, a big turn, a significant turn. And as uh, any uh, change in, in the ecosystem, uh, the game, and we are not at the end of the game, uh, we, are, uh, we will see uh, who has taken this curve uh, in, the most, uh, in the most efficient, efficient way. But only those that will take this move, take this, this turn, and uh, will, uh, will survive is perhaps excessive but we'll see their, uh, their competitivity and their, and their market share uh, uh, improve. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Does anyone else want to comment? Uh, Rudy Galeshan speaking, Rod and Schwartz. Uh, I think uh, Eric uh, pointed out uh, very uh, precisely uh, that it is um, a question of the ecosystem. Uh, some slides uh, before we saw we saw this uh, nice uh, picture with uh, 20 or 30 uh, companies in the ecosystem. The ecosystem uh, right now is. Uh, it's like it's like a, a train. It's uh, moving faster and faster, and it is uh, growing. It has not been uh, that uh, big in the past. Uh, it's an it's a process now, and it is uh, really evolving. And uh, if the ecosystem has reached its critical mass, and I I think we are uh, very short. Uh, uh, before uh, getting the critical mass, um, then uh, we can uh, say uh, that the SEA or is for this type of business mandatory in the future. So um, I think Eric is right. It's a question of the ecosystem. Thank you.
Any other comments from the panelists? Okay, um, I've got one additional question, so why don't we do it, and then we uh, perhaps can do a wrap-up. Uh, so the last question is, any examples of adoption of SCA in the wireless telecom equipment slash smartphones domain? Uh, Eric speaking. Uh, the short answer is, is more or less no, uh, but there is lots of good reasons why I'd like to elaborate on. Um, the, the business model, and we back to the business model, is definitely not the same between the the uh, the, the sphere of, uh, of military uh, telecommunications where uh, SCA started from and is developing, and uh, the domain of uh, of wireless telecom equipment, smartphones, uh, as depicted in the question. Um, uh, in in the wireless telecom equipment, smartphone domain, uh, the uh, the uh, the amount of investment in defining the standard first uh, has nothing to do uh, in terms of uh, involved effort compared to what is uh, taking place in the military uh, arena. The level uh, so the standards the spec only uh, is uh, of uh, clearly of higher quality in general when you talk to the uh, cellular phone standards etc. Compared to what we can have in the in the military. And then it goes on uh, into the uh, the development budget uh, that the uh, the vendors of cell phones or smartphones uh, can spend or needs to spend uh, in order to implement their uh, their radios. And so, therefore, uh, this driver of affordability of interoperability uh, that was uh, insisted upon during this call is way less uh, is way less uh, of interest uh, in the uh, in the in the commercial domain, uh, in the commercial domain, what will count are other uh, are definitely other differentiators, um, and uh, the competition will be uh, will be driven by the, the quality of the equipment, the uh, battery life, uh, a host of things, and uh, typically the way it is structured, generally the the uh, take the cellular phone example. Uh, Compared to to defense, uh, they are generally buying the complete stack from the guy who develops the hardware, uh, who is uh, developing the file layer, sometimes the, the Mac layer, uh, in uh, with some software that is given uh, along with the chipset. So it is not you 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 don't have the same boundaries between the different uh, the different actors, and the rationale for uh, portability is way less present and the rational for uh, for reconfigurability thanks to software reprogramming is way less present to make it uh, perhaps short too short but generally the the velcro approach what is dubbed velcro approach consists in having dedicated hardware Optimized and integrated next to each other inside the inside the chipset is a very popular um, within cellular phones uh, because uh, it proved uh, to be uh, more uh, cost and power efficient than uh, software programming approaches. This is changing. The uh, the fact there are more and more uh, waveforms to support uh, is creating issues that make reconfigurability a point of interest. But portability, as far as I know, is, is not a point of, uh, of key uh, interest. And the, the, all, all of this uh, sets the, the, the rationale uh, for which uh, what created the ground for SCA in the military domain uh, is simply so different in the commercial domain that there are a few reasons why the commercial uh, industry would endorse uh, SCA-like kind of things need to nuance that uh, based on what things uh, are t taking place uh, at the uh, at the Etsy uh, RRS uh, level for instance they are uh, considering uh, a number of uh, a number of uh, improvements uh, and standards but this has definitely not the same level of maturity compared to what uh, is seen within the uh, the military domain and the reason why is that the business case is definitely not the same. Thank you.
Thank you, Eric. Uh, any other uh, comments on the question before we uh, before we wrap up the webinar? Hey, this is Ken from Harris. Um, and the question was specifically towards the telecom market, um, in which case Eric answered that. But I do believe the SCA has been making um, some early inroads into some other markets like robotics and um, is, is being used there at least, you know, maybe not in full deployment or anything yet, but the industries such as robotics are looking at SCA and experimenting with it. That's good. Any other comments from the panelists? Okay, with that, why don't we uh, conclude the webinar. Um, again, I'll just uh, give a quick reminder. The slides for this uh, webinar will be posted online later today. Um, you can find them at wirelessinnovation.org slash webinars, tutorials, and resources. And um, we'll be sending out that link to everyone so that they have access to it. Um, We've also recorded the webinar, and so if you want to, uh, and we'll be posting the link to that as well, and if, uh, if you want to share that with others or uh, ask others to, uh, to view it offline, uh, they are welcome to do so. And finally, as a, uh, a, a final request, uh, we're going to be sending the link for the satisfaction survey out as well, and we really uh, request that everyone uh, fill out that satisfaction survey. Uh, we, we, we really value the feedback. So thank you again to everyone uh, in the audience for attending. Thank you to our, our panelists for, uh, for participating. Uh, special thanks to Eric and Ken for, uh, for, for all the, the work they did in, in, in main presentation. Um, and um, with that, I will close the webinar. Thank you very much, everyone.